I think the first thing, it was a great script. It, it, it was one of those scripts that, that I read and it, I was just punched in the gut by and in and, and, and very real ways. I think that that's, that's one of the highlighting most wonderful parts of it is that you read it and it's even though it has to do with artificial intelligence which is a term that's usually very like sci-fi and later and in the future it, it, it really grounds it into the reality that we've already created with it and how interconnected we already are with it and what and the damage that's already been done and 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 what that's going to look like as it progresses so yeah. Same thing. I the script was great, and I just thought it, it wasn't like anything else I had read. And um, I thought conceptually it was just shooting so so high that I, you know, a lot of times, you know, as actors we just we just have to polish a piece of shit, and uh, because we need to eat. And uh, so it was nice to have something that's like was like really kind of conceptually unique and and really cool. And then and then when we got to 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 work. Um, I don't know. It was just a really cool, cool set, and a really, you know, the guy, the guys know what they're doing, and it's, I mean, it's just it was efficient. Yeah, yeah. It really makes sense that there would be a lot of conflict between the people driving this forward, right? And they want to see this happen, and then the people who are like, "Wait, no, we can't. It's going to ruin the world." Like, so is that? Possibly? Well, you actually have two characters in the show that are kind of having that conversation. Yeah, and I feel like that is that is the general split when you talk about those subjects, right? There's the people that are super excited about the promises that it brings to our, you know, making our lives easier and making health advancements, medical, by you know, and then there's the people that are very terrified of what it can do and what can happen, and I think there's like the the blending of that, and and I think the show really grounds it in that way where it's 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 already happening. And what what does that look like once the super intelligence has gotten out of control and is now, you know, messing with our lives? Can you tell us about your characters? She plays my boss. Yeah, I, I, I play Shay Salazar. She's an FBI agent. She specializes in cybercrime, and she um, she has a team of incredibly talented and, and, and insanely smart people. And and Mike plays CM, who who is a hacker. I'm a hacker with a with an ankle bracelet that I <laughs> I might, may or may not have been affiliated with some. Uh, some of the alt right and maybe some activism that's very dodgy. Really dodgy. And he, I guess, he went to the clink and now he's uh, out doing his penance or burning off hours working for for you. Um, but then I think then you know uh, as soon as they, but they're all really intelligent people and good at their jobs. And I think the you know they're so as, as soon as this AI thing kind of gets into the kind of conversation. They all kind of Voltron together, and I think uh, because I think that's the more existential kind of crisis. I think they they come to they come to conclude more so than politics, maybe. Yeah, because cybercrime generally what they have been working on is a lot of you know accounting theft and and unfortunately also uh, human trafficking and other things like that that you end up facing um, with cybercrime. But actual artificial intelligence, I think, really really. Kind of that comes as a surprise and, and, and shocks us just the same as I think it would shock you or me or anybody else that it's actually here. You know, I think there's there's still a feeling in, in everybody that like it's, it's later. That, that's that's going to happen later. Um, so it's, it's really digesting that, that it's here, it's now, and it's happening. And that really is the... the what, what people are talking about is that we don't want to see it, but it's already in progress. Does it change your opinion about uh, AI? Do you still have an Alexa at home? <laughs> I have one. You do? I yeah, don't you don't have one? No. <laughs> I wonder what Alexa's doing right now. I wonder if she's like. I wonder what she's doing. Does she? I she's don't know. Up I have a. I have, she's going through your stuff. She might be going through my stuff. I have. I can look at like my these dog. These text messages could have been so much fun. I have a thing where I can. I have a robot now that Fox gave me on my birthday. What? Um, you got a robot? I got a Fox birthday from present from Fox. You didn't get a birthday present from I Fox? Did not get a so and it's a robot that sits in my room. And looks at my dog, 
and I can tap, I can pull it up and see my dog from New York and I can send him a treat and I can talk to him. Oh my God. But my I dog's like too that. stupid. <laughs> so he doesn't get any of it. Or he's too smart. Or he's too smart. He's like, yeah, he's a dumb robot. He's like, there's no heartbeat here. Screw this. Um, but uh, I don't know why I brought that up. That was weird. That's that's <laughs> intense. Just to make me feel bad that <laughs> that's I what I wanted to do. Yeah. That's right. You got the gold watch too, right? Oh no, you didn't. I'm just kidding. There's no. Gold watch. <laughs> so, is this show hopeful? Like, do we see humans banding together to try and fight the meteor that's coming towards? We've only us? seen the pilot, so okay, we don't so, know. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I think that the people are all good people. They're good people. I think they are. I don't know. Maybe not. not all. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that at the end they band together, or I don't know, maybe they all perish and AI wins and we only do this one for one season. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm hoping. No, I'm, I'm hoping it's got it's got hope. Yes, it's yeah. got it's it's got hope. It's got sweet. I think it too. very much explores uh, how it could go how it could go wrong, but also raises that awareness of like how will we rise up and how will we battle something that is pure super intelligence, right? What is it about us as a human race and what is it about us as people that that isn't just pure intelligence, that isn't just data and numbers. So I think that is that is what it's what's forcefully demanded out of these characters to search for. And I think that's just interesting for me to think about, you know, of how much how much I'm cultivating that way. There should be a, somebody was saying something like there should be like a no phone day or something where we all leave yeah. our phones at home and we all go out for a day and we just leave it at home. Yeah. And like I mean what like meatless Mondays. Like, right? yeah, yeah. We all like. Well, the Tarantino sets have no. Have phones no phones. Yeah. So maybe we'll just do that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I kind of like this. Scenario. I don't know about that. Go ahead. Two you. When you first introduced to AI, when were you first introduced to AI? I don't know, like, is it like, Byron Spielberg or something? Or is, I don't know, just as a kid, like, sci-fi stuff, like the idea, or Hal from 20, yeah, 20 yeah. from Space Odyssey? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. Like, if a computer says that to you, that's spooky. Um, <laughs> so maybe Hal, I think. I don't know. That might have been my first kind of, I, I, when it conceptually, like, hit me that, like, oh, my God, what if this thing just says no someday? And just, or whatever, you know. Yeah, and decides to go the other way. Yeah, I think so. I think it, I think mine was in like books and stories, and also my dad is someone who thinks about this stuff a lot. So it was probably in conversation with my dad of trying to trying to figure out what would happen. And and, and the interesting part about that is for me, it was always very much like, oh, what would happen if that was imbued in a human body or a person or like a unit um, that I could like, you know, like Terminator style. <laughs> that that to me was yeah. that to me was the real beginning of it. Like, oh my. God, it's going to look like this, and it's crazy, and it's wild, and I think the idea that it's, it's it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily have any interest in taking a human form or the form of a unit at all because it can do so much more if it's invisible, you know? Yeah. It limits. It's not it. some little red-eyed like robot, you know. It's everywhere. It's yeah. like. And it's like bloodless and lifeless and heartless and it's, you don't even know what it is. I mean, it's everywhere. So like, that's kind of the idea of our show. Have I ever been had like, odd or weird experiences with technology that's kind of like, makes you... Uh, well, you know, like when you search something and then all of a sudden the ads come up, I think that's like, really gross. Like that's really creepy. Like that, I think, when that started happening, I was like, oh, really? Y'all gonna play like that? Like, that's... That was spooky when that kind of... And then you realize, oh my God, every we're wa they're watching every, yeah, you know. I mean, ne Netflix knows what you watched, when you stopped watching it, what time you stopped watching, what you turned to something else, and they keep it all in the, in, in house. Not like a, I'm bi I'm <laughs> bashing Netflix now because we're on Fox. <laughs> So fuck Netflix? No, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> so we're on Fox now. I don't even know what the streaming thing is. Um, <laughs> is that like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of when I. Was, that's kind of when I it gave me the willies. I don't know. How do your characters relate to John Slattery? Slattery's character. Are you investigating him? Are you working with him? Like, what is the? Connection? Well, the so Shay's character starts as you'll see in the pilot when you. you 
you're watching it, right? You're going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you see, like, the, the show starts with her experiencing a really great loss of someone who really meant a lot to her. And, it is, you know, she's a detective, so she looks a little fishy, so she starts looking into it. And that kind of leads her to John Slattery's character um, um, in a way through that person that she lost. So it kind of leads her in that direction, and that's how that's really why she takes any interest in it, because it is really personal to her. Um, and that's when she discovers what is really happening and is already in it and inclined to jump on the board. When you came to the development of your characters, were you able to have a collaborative effort with the writing staff, the directors, in order to fully get inside the head of your characters? It was really cool because when we shot the pilot, they actually brought us a couple of weeks earlier so we could actually sit down and, and talk to them about the characters, which was really cool. And I think from the get-go, John and Glenn and Manny have established a really open and collaborative um, type of environment. I think that because we've only shot the pilot, now we now it's also, also kind of like getting to know how, how that's going to go and, and figure out that all of my experiences have been yeah. super. 